Graham Garland here at the Hellfire Club. Welcome to Clear the Head. Each week we'll be talking to a member of Shamrock Rovers Football Club, going for a walk through their life and their journey. I, I love, you know, I've had a career in this league, I've loved it. Yeah. Um, you know, I'll never, when I retire, I'll never look back and think not going abroad yeah. is like a, a disappointment for me because yeah. this league has given me some of the best days of my life. Yeah. And what would they be? Just massive games, chance to play in Europe, winning trophies and cups and stuff like that. So, I know anyone that's important to me has been there. Here with Sean Gannon this afternoon. Delighted to have you. Another ex teammate of mine. You're starting to make me feel old or young. <laughs> I don't know which one it is, yeah. Thanks for coming up. No problem. Um, you've your start in football was probably the route that we're trying to get probably a lot of our academy kids to try and do is that you you stay in Ireland, you look at going into education, you then come through with a club. Um, you started at Cambridge and then went to Home Farm. What was it like, obviously, coming out of Home Farm then to finding your way to Rovers? Because it was like, a li you you told me before, it was a little bit of last chance saloon maybe getting to Rovers. Yeah, I probably, you know, if, if people are going to the UK, you know, I'm probably the polar opposite to how I get to the, you know, the level I'm at today. Um, even take someone like, like Cavo and all these lads who went and yeah. experienced academies and stuff like that. Um, I obviously started with Cambridge and I kind of felt like from an early age football was all that I wanted to do and had an opportunity to go to home farm and um, I went there, I was there for six years and um, I loved it. Um, no, it wouldn't have been possible without the support of obviously my family, I was so young, I was 11 years of age and um, my dad was working shift work, he'd come home. Yeah, works in Erlingus? Yeah, he works in Erlingus, yeah, he's still, he's still doing the shift work today. And, um, he'd come home from the airport, half five, throw the bag in the corner, still in his uniform, me out the door to training, like, yeah. um, so back across the city, so I don't think I would have been able to play yet for home farm if I hadn't had that kind of support for, yeah. behind me and stuff like that, so I was there for six years, went to Kevin's then for, for two, I ended up playing DDSL football till I was 18. Right. Um, was there a big drop off from probably 15 onwards? Where that, when you know when at 15 there's a group of kid boys that all go away, all the internationals, and then it's nearly about who can stay at a level what that's left. That's what I found with that, you know. When I used to come back and watch, it was like all the internationals are away in the academies in the UK, but then the lads that were left were nearly just trying to stay in football as much as they could. Yeah, I think there's kind of a stigma around if you don't go away by a certain age, it's, it's over, like, yeah. you know, you're... You know, this ship has sailed, whatever the age is, you, like, that's when, when I was growing up anyway, um, maybe 15, 16, maybe yeah. even younger it is today. Um, if you don't go away, that's it. You yeah. know, it's, it's over. And I kind of knew I wanted to play football um, for so long when I was in my schoolboy days. You know, I never got picked for a Kennedy Cup team, never got picked for an Ireland underage team, never even had so much as a you know, trial in the UK, anything like that. Now, I haven't think about it there, and I was playing centre forward at the time, so that probably explains <laughs> it. Like, yeah, holding yeah, on to the uh, as a striker. Yeah, though. so um, that might explain it. But Did they give you extra resolve, or was there ever a, any point did you ever think, oh, this just isn't going to happen? Yeah, I, th I think I was coming to a stage where I was finishing secondary school. I'd right. just done my leaving cert, and I was kind of thinking, you know, I'm playing DDSL, what am I going to do? Like, where am I? Am I is this going to happen for me? Is it not? Yeah. Um, Started, I started myself to look at you know, different avenues. I didn't know football was going to happen for me. So, um, but in fairness, my mum and dad never once, like, never once tried to like deviate me from what I wanted to do. Never once questioned, like, you know, is I you know, listen, Sean? Like, you're you're 18, you're 17. Are you thinking about going to college? Yeah. Think about so. They just backed me 100%, yeah, supported me. Chase whatever yeah, they to oh, chase, like. anything I ever, you know, I ever need, anywhere I ever needed to go through football, you know, they were just there. And it, at 18, I was kind of thinking, I actually went and done a, the FEI Foss course in Ringsend right. with Jerry Davis. 
It was unbelievable, guys. Something honest. around the corner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I actually think I got in because my ma collared Jerry Davis in a deli, I think, right. in Ring's End. And oh, said, right. listen, will you take me son? Yeah. You take me son onto, yeah. onto the course. So he still slags me over today, actually, Mom's Jerry. Been nice, was she? Yeah, yeah. Uh, she's just yeah. seen him in the FEI yeah. tracksuits and she just took a, took a moment. So um, I went, when I left school, I went and trained with them, first of all. Okay. I wasn't actually officially on the course. Right. I, was, I trained with them for a little while. And then the following year, um, I, I applied for the course. I got on, okay. so it was it was brilliant. It was um, it was the closest thing to kind of full time football, but yeah. combined with education. So um, it was just a year. The course was a year, but I loved it. You know, yeah. it was it was for me. It was you know, you're training in the morning, you're studying, but um, after that, then it was time for me to you know really kind of see where I was going to go. But during that year, I just left Kevin's. We played a friendly against Rovers and that's how I got my chance just one, yeah. one game one friendly um, Andy Moyler and Declan Heavey were the, were the coaches at Rovers in the under 20s and Michael was still in charge of the first team yeah, the Michael, stage, yeah. yeah Michael was in charge of the first team and um, just I was playing centre back played against Rovers and they asked a couple of us to come up and train Yeah, and that was it they were the only club to give me a chance they were the only club to take a chance on me playing the DDSL at 18 so is that I always what you felt, feel you came back now? Yeah, I always felt like I owed something, yeah. you know. Um, maybe when I left, I probably didn't get the chance to play as much or whatever, but I always wanted to come back and, you know, give something back to the club because they gave me the opportunity to, you know, play at this level. So, the, In terms of when you first came into Rovers, you're probably, you're like, with Declan, he, or with um, Andy Moyle, let's say, where were you training then? So we were up in Sacred Heart. Yeah. Um, it was still kind of you train twice a week, and yeah. Um, so it was up in Sacred Heart, just up there in Kiltipper. But um, it was brilliant. It was coming from the DDSL, you know, being a part of the public role was just yeah. know, unbelievable. But now when you see like the 16-year-olds now training three nights yeah. a week, yeah, gym session, yeah. Now you see the difference compared to that was back in 2011. Yeah. Now you're looking at 10 years on, 11 years on. Yeah. And you look at where it is now, it's a completely different club, isn't it? Oh, it's, it's, it's in a different universe, to be honest. Yeah. I look at the young lads that are even in with us, and they are so far ahead of me <laughs> at that age. Like, they are just, they are, like, ready. You yeah. Know? Like, you know, just to even, Tio Zoidemo as an example, you know, he is in a different universe to where I was at his age. Yeah. Like, he's scoring in Euro. Yeah. 17 years of age, you know. I'm playing, I was playing DDSL football at 17. Yeah. But I think the exposure for him and lads like him and Sean Carey and people like that are, they're in with us every day. Yeah. They're in that environment, like they're yeah. in, they're, it's like a. It's in, not just two nights a week and, and an evening in Sacred Heart. Like, yeah, yeah, no, that? they're, no, these are. And for um, you, that was brilliant at the time. Yeah. And it was everything you wanted at the time. But then you're like, now look at where it is and that, like you said. You are, they're only going to get better because they're playing against the likes of you. Yeah. So Oidemo is now up against a multiple league winner yeah. in yourself, Lopez, Hor, yeah. Grace. So he has to come up with something yeah. where you're playing against someone your own age, yeah. your own physicality. You're going to be, if you're better than them, you're just better than them, mm -hmm. you know? So um, your 2012 year, that was when I come in. Uh, we had signed, Michael had just left. Stephen Kenny took over. You have a great relationship with Stephen. I remember our first pre-season. It was tough. It was tough in terms of for you. Yeah. I remember thinking, this is tough for, for, for Sean. Um, but it was a tough group that yeah. year. Maybe Michael leaving, and, and then it just became a little bit fractured in terms of it wasn't great. That was a tough environment for you as a kid to come into. Yeah, I think I came in probably... From the under twenties, we ended up winning the league. Yeah. And um, I was on the the boss course at the time, and Jerry was brilliant, letting us go. A couple of us got called into first team training. Yeah. He let us off because trained during the day. So I'd kind of been in and around the first team a little bit, but not not nowhere near what young lads are in with us today. You know. Yeah. Uh, so the landscape at the time was Pat Sullivan had gone to Australia. Yeah. And there was a gap in right back. Yeah. And it was between you and we had signed Kerry Gilbert. Yeah. And we were hoping, well, the club was hoping 
that was going to be obviously a bit of experience with Gilbert and then you were eventually going to push him. Yeah. But it was a bit, it was just strange that for the first probably five or six months there, wasn't I it? I think it was a massive shock for me um, because it was my first pre-season, you know, as part of a force team. Yeah. And I was just way off it. Yeah. It was so far beyond what I was used to. Yeah. Um, I think you probably lapped me, did you? It's probably did. I remember trying to help you at one stage. So, uh, you were, it was just a button. You, got, you felt ill. Yeah, I I, that. I've, uh, it was just kind of, it was, <laughs> it was a massive shock for me because I, it was just, it was my first time really the expectancy of a first game player, yeah. do you know, and I hadn't had the kind of, I'd never been part of an academy as you were saying or anything like that, so I'd never known what it was like to be, have the expectancy of a big club and and the expectancy to perform as a, as a first team player now. I was still young, but I felt I was part of the squad, you know. Yeah. Um, so I, t- I feel better for that shock now because I I was I think it needed to happen to me. Right. Because I felt then right I've got to you know I've got to change what I'm doing isn't enough anymore. Yeah. And I've got to you know I've got to either like even not even just physically, just even stuff like you know lads getting on to you, crit- criticism and stuff like that. I needed to learn how to deal with that, how to take it. And not everyone is getting on to you for a bad reason. Yeah. You know, people are trying to help you, but when you're in a force team, these things happen again yeah. because of the expectancy of you. So I think I think sometimes in 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 that environment as a as a probably an older player, you haven't got the time to go, I can explain this to you now. Yeah. So it might just be a case of Gano, you need to tuck in. Just yeah. Just get in, and yeah. I might be aggressive, and you might go, oh. But afterwards, you can explain it. I found at the time with you, you especially, I remember thinking, they need, we need to help them a bit more. And I meant us, whatever senior players were there, I actually remember speaking to some of the staff and saying, you need to help them a bit more, because we need to let him understand what we're looking for. So now he has an idea in his head. And I remember a couple of times even saying it to, one of the coaches that was helping out, going, take them back and show them what we need. Like, and, but like I said, the environment at the time was you couldn't stay back and do extra work. You were like, we didn't even stay for lunch. We were just yeah. we were training the AOL. Yeah. Like I was like, I remember having a row with Jonathan Roach in a good way, going, why are we training on the north side? Yeah. And Jonathan be giving out to me, going, Graham, shut up. Like, yeah. you're, like this is the way it is. But all in the while, Jonathan's working on. Well, I want to get us back south side. You yeah. know, I just wasn't aware of that. But. Yeah. That's where it was difficult, but I think mentally you've shown so much strength from that. But how tough was it? Was it like, did you feel that maybe you could have got more help, or did you feel in a way that, or do you know what? I'm actually glad I didn't now because it made me stronger for it. Yeah, I actually, to be honest, I, I feel just going back to the shock of, you know, that, that pre season. Because I can say this, and I know you won't say it. Like, Kerry Gilbert came in. He struggled. The bit that the bit that probably hurt you at the time was Kerry didn't overly care about the club. Didn't overly care about. He was just playing. Sometimes he would. There's times he wasn't coming into training. And you're there going, I care. I want to play, but yeah. help me and I'll be better. Yeah. You know. Was there a feeling of that there without you having to say it? Like, do you know what I mean? Yeah, I think obviously I, I, I really, I really did care because. I was part of what was the best, the best squad in the country. Yeah. Um, at such a young age, and um, I wanted to, I wanted to improve. I wanted to play. I knew I'd so much learning to do because of how quickly I'd gone. I'd gone from playing in the DDSL. To, yeah. You know, in 2010 to playing, you, you know, being in 2012. Yeah. I only and one year. I'd one year in the youth system at Rover, so I had now. Obviously, looking back now, I feel like probably being thrown in the deep end helped me yeah. because I had to learn on the job. Like I had to learn on the spot. I had to, I had to improve every aspect of my game, how I live my life off the pitch. How did you do that, Connor? It, it was it was tough because when you're training for an hour, you know you're training for an hour on a Tuesday and a Thursday and playing a match yeah. on the weekend. Like heavens, um, to go from your full-time pro, um, I, I just, 
I know it's department not about it, but I think if I was part, maybe in an academy system where they had some sort of idea of what it was like yeah. to be, to live that life. Yeah. But I wasn't, so I had to adapt and um, I knew fitness, fitness was I wasn't ready uh, that year. Um, and that probably showed me that I needed to adapt my life. I needed to just knuckle down like full time football um, with the help of my family, obviously. Yeah. So. It was it was good like that year. I know you probably you were probably one of the senior pros in the changing room that year. And you probably noticed a lot of things that I wouldn't have noticed because I was just a, I was young. I was trying yeah. to you know I was trying to earn my stripes really. I was trying to just get to that level that I could put my name forward to play. So um, it was it was it was a tough year probably for everybody. Yeah, well, yeah, it was. Uh it wasn't exactly what we we had wanted at, in that year because obviously we were in Europe, but we were trying to win three leagues in a row, which is yeah. similar to what you're doing now. Yeah. That's why it's so relevant. Yeah. And that's where I don't. I think that squad compared to this one is completely different. Yeah. And the bit it, the bit that I see the difference is is how do you treat the players coming in? Yeah. Yeah. And you're part of that now. Yeah. Yeah, are you no. trying to help the younger players? Are you trying to help people and everybody beside you, really? Yeah. You know. I think I I kind of think that now I'm probably faster, probably a senior player. Kind of. How old are you now? Thirty. Ah, oh, yeah, definitely. Seen. Would you hit the <laughs> forty? <laughs> yeah. So I think we kind of have an obligation to help the young lads, um, because I I've been that player. We all have, I suppose. Yeah. Um, I had I had great help from a few lads. In 2011, when I first came up to the first team, I kind of gravitated towards lads in position. So, yeah. Um, you know, Pat Flynn was brilliant for me. Pat Sullivan, brilliant yeah. for me. Two lads, and then in 2012, obviously yourself, and Finner. So I did have help. Like, yeah, I did, yeah. I did have lads who wanted to help me improve, and you know, I've always appreciated that because. Yeah, Finner was great with you actually. I remember that. Yeah, he was really we've good. We've always been close, myself and Finner. Yeah. Since we played, since then, probably since we played together, and yeah. we didn't play together. We've always been quite close, so um, he would he would have definitely been a big help for me because he's he's not he's not much older than me. Yeah, but he was able to help me. He was, so he yeah. Respect the, the respect and obviously with his coming through, a, for him coming through at UCD, like Finner was the hype that I yeah. played against Finner. Like, and he was so he he went through a similar development process to yeah. you, and yeah. that hadn't gone through an academy, came out d- trying to understand how to be a footballer. Yeah. And what, that's what I'm saying to you, how to be a footballer. Like, I remember seeing you then a few years later. You were in the gym and I was in there. And the physicality of you was massive. Yeah. I remember talking to you going, you're fit now. And you're like, yeah, I yeah. can run now. And yeah, that, yeah. But that, of you're investing in yourself so you can put it back into the team, you know? Well, I think there's also an element of... I got such a shock that year <laughs> yeah. that if I didn't improve in these things, no matter how good I was as a player however good anybody is as a player like if you if I didn't do if I didn't add things to me you know to me game if I didn't add things to myself physically that the next person behind me was going to yeah and someone or somebody else was going to so I needed that I, like I, I'd been so long waiting to get a chance that I wasn't gonna let, gonna let it pass if that makes sense yeah I, I, I needed to do what I needed to do to you know to get to that level you were yeah. gonna grab it like yeah I was gonna grab it because as I say like I'd be lying to you if I if, if I saying at times pre Rovers where I was thinking this isn't gonna happen like well, yeah, yeah yeah hundred percent yeah well yeah because like, I was watching lads all around me going abroad and stuff like that and, um, it just it just wasn't it just didn't happen for me and, and that's that's fine like you know see my observation as somebody who knew you as a kid you've been you've been inner resolve about you that probably gets overlooked because you're a nice fella. Mm. Like there's other people that have resolve and they carry you. You have a little chip on the shoulder about it. You always had an inner resolve of I'm gonna keep going. I'm gonna keep going. And that that's something I admire I admired in you from up close and afar. Um so fair play to you for staying. And I know what you're saying about you're looking around and you see other people going, You get this yeah. I want that, I wanted that. During your time at Dundalk did you ever, you had ambitions of going to the UK then as well? Or was it something that you thought, no, I'm happy here? Do you know, um, do you know? Because when you seen, like, say, Daryl Horgan went, Richie yeah. Tell went, a lot of the lads went, Macmillan went to Scotland. 
Like, was there a lot? Of, were you thinking? I could, I could go here. I'm, I'm one of the most consistent performers in the, in yeah, the team here. Maybe. I, I mean, I'd be lying if I said that. If the right move ever came up for me, yeah. that I'd, I'd go, I'd turn it down, whatever. But I spent a couple of years early on in my career, kind of not playing. Yeah. Kind of unhappy, like in and out, kind of not, not really getting any game time. So when I went to Dundalk and I was playing, I was just. I had such a happiness with, with my football. Like ah, I really like enjoy my football, and I was kind of hesitant to give that up. And to be honest, the, the opportunity never really came for me to go okay, away. Right. I'd never, there was nothing ever concrete for me to go away, or you know, I'd get a couple of calls. There was never any concrete kind of, you know, offers or anything like that that would have made me go up in my life. Yeah. So listen, I, I love, you know, I've had a career in this league. I've loved it. Yeah. Um, you know, I'll never. When I retire, I'll never look back and think not going abroad. Yeah, it is like a, a disappointment for me because yeah. this league has given me some of the best days of my life. Yeah, and what would they be? Just massive games, chance to play in Europe, winning trophies and cups and stuff like that. So, and all anyone that's important to me has been there. Yeah, you know. So, I like I've really enjoyed having a career in the league and. Um, as I said to you, it's given me some of the some of the best. And what would be your mother and father's proudest moments for for you that you look yeah. in? And I don't know. My dad, like my dad, is going to football madly. Yeah. Every game, no matter what, to get me a program. Yeah. You know, like he's a scrapbook probably <laughs> right. from when I'm such a young age to probably today, and you know they have. Your three, so your three houses away from where Rovers was. Yeah, so obviously being, founded. Yeah, so where so the, where the, Rovers are founded, there's the, the, it's in the, blocks, like so. I'm three streets over. Rovers return is what they call this. Rovers return, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, it, yeah, now my dad has been um, such a big influence. Same as my mum, they've been a massive influence on me with football. Um, they've always been supportive, as I say, and anything that I win or anything that I just I give to them because I firmly believe without them support me, even when I get past those years of. As I said earlier on, yeah. the years where you have to go, yeah. you know, when it wasn't happening for me, not once did they ever, you know, try and say to me, Sean, listen, you know, you have to start planning this, you have to try and do this or that. Yeah. Um, they've always just supported me 100%. So I, I think, I mean, my dad came to Israel to watch me play in the Europa League. So um, for me to have him there, you know, after him. Would he be the one you go to for advice then as well? Yeah, both, yeah. My, my, the two of them have been, as I said, yeah, any decisions I make in football, you know, it's like I, I speak to them. They've yeah. got a massive influence on, on me now. I'm an only child, so probably they just kind of <laughs> pull them in. But, Laser uh, focus on yeah, you. Yeah, so, um, yeah, so. well, that's what yeah, it was. Well, yeah. yeah, yeah. Did you feel extra pressure on you being at Rovers the first time being from Ring's End? And has that carried over now to this? Or are you are you are you a little bit more comfortable in yourself to go? Well, obviously, obviously, growing up in Rings End, you know, you hear about all the great Rovers players that played previously. Um, so yeah, yeah. So you obviously know, you know all about the club. You know the history of the club in the area. Um, I played in many of the Rings End. Why was I going to the park? So, um, and just the support that's there is is, is unbelievable. Um, the lads in the Rings End, they do unbelievable work. Yeah. Um, their, their members are growing and growing. So is that Ed Sol and that? Yeah, it is. Yeah, Ed just won the league with Crumlin, didn't yeah, he? Yeah, he did. Yeah, so uh, congrats to him. But um, and I know a lot of the lads personally. Yeah. Um, so obviously. But sometimes that closeness can. Yeah, I remember not, coming back from. Yeah. I, <laughs> I came back from Talent to Talent in 2012, and you what like you said, you're walking in the square yeah. after you lose, and you're getting yeah. to sort yourself out, girl, and then you're yeah. like, it wasn't even playing, like you know, but. Yeah, like, no, well, that's worse because I wasn't, I couldn't play, and we still lost, you know. Yeah. But you understand, like that closeness to it. Yeah, I suppose. Because yeah. I carried it home then. Yeah. I'd be like, that. Well, I obviously, you know, in my first spell at the club, um, you know, they were kind of wanting to see me play more, and well, you're not playing, and you know, yeah, that type of stuff. So. What to like? What's going on there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, you're, yeah you're trying so. to protect your dressing room, but exactly, yeah. yeah. So obviously, it, it, it was tough, but. Um, even when I haven't been, even when I haven't been at the club, the lads just say that the locals to do well. And yeah. Um, obviously, myself and Cabo get great support from them. Yeah, that's know, right. Yeah. Time, so, um, yeah, I think being from Ringsend, obviously there is an added thing of playing for the club. And yeah. 
kind of means that a little bit more. And obviously the club is huge for the supporters. Yeah, in it's the everything, area. yeah. So, uh, but there's always, they've always been supportive, yeah. One of the things I, I'd probably be not critical of teams, because we went through it at different stages. Your, your, your time at Dundalk was ridiculously successful. You just won everything. You just were in the group stages. Uh, fantastic achievement. What was the group stages like for you? And how, obviously, the experience you went through in 2011 with Rovers, was that something you leaned on a little bit, even though you were on the periphery of it? But was it something you understood? And then what did you take from them? What did you learn from them that in the levels in the game? Like, you know? Yeah, in 2011, <clears throat> I just came up to the first team. I yeah. trained towards the end. I made my debut and I'd only played one league game. Right. So, but I was, I was there and I was in there in Belgrade when Sully yeah. scored the volley and that, yeah. So I was, and getting, t- for me, just get being on these trips was just like unbelievable because it's just been a, such a short space of time. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it was, it was something that I learned on, to be honest. Yeah. And obviously being, just not even, nothing to do with football, just the preparation and the, yeah. the travel and stuff. So it's something, obviously, when you've experienced it previously, you know, it's something that I would have leaned on. The group stages were, you know, were, uh, were brilliant, to be honest. It's just... It's it's crazy because you don't think there's a lot of difference in you know in the levels. Of yeah. I feel like we were very competitive, but a lot of the games were just decided on moments. Just mo- yeah, just a, a, probably the higher level the levels you go up, the more kind of like a chess match nearly. Like yeah. One thing and one thing and that's it. But I thought we were we were we were good. We were very competitive. I thought I went to the last game of the groups, um, and we still had a chance to go. Look, I mean, we were playing we were playing in the Champions League group stage playoff in the Aviva. Yeah. You know, to get into the group, so it was, you know, we it was it was an unbelievable experience in, in 2016. Something you're hoping to repeat this year, then with, with Rovers. 100 percent. I think I think we're very close. I think last yeah. year, last year obviously we weren't close. We we're kind of disappointed that we didn't get there. So I think that's the joy. There's a the frustration it. in the squad about it, isn't there? You can tell, like yeah, you know, Gary mentioned the last week that even this season, we in pre-season it was gearing towards yeah. how we play in Europe. You know, and I was like, right, you, they're obviously it's an extra yeah. bit of focus on it. I think that's the belief in the squad, and it's the belief in the players from from the staff. They believe that we're good enough yeah. to play in a group stage of, the, of European competition, and we all believe it. You yeah, know, we do believe it. We to go so close last year and lose, you know, in the playoffs. It's, it's tough, like it's on your mind. Yeah, the off season. And it's a long wait, then, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, because you're watching the games on the TV, and you're thinking, you know, we. Yeah, but I mean that's that's the beauty of it. Like we have another we have another chance this year, and I think um, the squad is you know, ridiculously strong at the moment. And there's plenty of competition. And I think we have a lot of players who are well suited to Europe. I think yeah. there's a lot of technically good players and like keep the ball. Yeah, yeah. I think it's you know, we've, a lot, we've got a lot of clever players as well, yeah. especially in clever on the pitch. Yeah, clever on the pitch. Yeah, definitely. Because yeah. the clever ones on the pitch. Yeah, yeah. yeah probably yeah. aren't the brightest off it. Ah, hundred percent. Yeah. Huh? Yeah, definitely. Don't but, tell um, Borky we said that. Though. <laughs> <laughs> he's probably the most. He's technically unbelievable. Um, but, um, so the next bit then is you've had a little change, and obviously coming to here, you are an out and out right back at Dundalk. You've played wing back when you came in, and then you've you've changed the right side of centre back. The end of last year with Joey O'Brien was injured and stuff, and you came in. Which one did you? Which one did you feel more comfortable in, or prefer, or was it was a hard adjusting your position to for certain things? Like, can you talk me through the process of both? Yeah, I th- I, I think I didn't ad- adapt as quickly as I would have thought. Yeah. Um, I think you know when I was conditioned to play one way. Yeah. For so long. Seven years, wasn't seven it? Seven years. years yeah, so yeah. Long, yeah, and literally had one one way of playing. And, yeah. Um, obviously, the manager, when I was coming, he believed I could play in either of the yeah. positions. So, obviously... Has he been a good big help to you in, in, oh, exp- in yeah. explaining it and breaking it down massively for Massively, because, you know, he's so detailed in, in his work. Like, there's yeah. no detail that's that's too small, really. Like, yeah. You know? And he's all, he always goes on to us about, you know, small details, the small margins can decide the game. So, yeah. Um, yeah, it was brilliant with me. I think, obviously, as a wing-back... You know, being up high and being in line with the centre forward. Yeah. I mean, it was it was new to me really. Um, Getting into the back post. Yeah, because when you're playing as an orthodox fullback, 
evolved and it's got your winger in front of you and you can use him as a dummy. Yeah. So you know when you can make you can run off and you can inside yeah, and you yeah. can tell him go in, go out or whatever. So when you're a wing back it's kinda you and you've gotta work, you've gotta you know, get in positions where to make life hard for the full back, you've got to get in at the bat at the back stick, yeah. you've got to get back and then recover obviously centrally. So um these are all things that it probably took me a bit of time to get okay you know, to get to get up to speed with but um it I really enjoy both positions to be honest. I think I can I can play in either. Yeah. Um, the right centre back obviously feels a little bit more natural because it's coming on to the game at such the game's in front of you. Yeah, the game's in front of you, yeah. So um obviously I've been playing there, I played there in the second half of last season, really enjoyed it, but um I think tactically it's uh, it was it was different, but I feel like, you know, once I got the grips with it, you know, I can still improve, there's no doubt. Um, what do you think you can improve on? I think I just think like positionally and stuff like that, I can definitely improve. Um, playing in whatever position I'm playing in, just even adding little small things to my game. Obviously, just going back about the manager there, you know, just the ball, the ball may be over you know, 50 yards away, but you're still yeah. involved in the game here. Yeah. You know, it's just, you know, positions where we set up. And, um, but yeah, it's, it's coming along. I'm, I feel like I'm. I feel like I'm enjoying my football in, in either position really. Yeah, you can yeah, the, I thought at the end of last year, like you said, when you're coming in at that right centre back position because Joey was he announced that he, he's retiring and stuff and I thought like I said to you, I thought you were excellent there to uh, and it looked real comfortable for you. And people actually don't realise how tall you are that you yeah. can do it. Do you know what I mean? You're, yeah. you're six foot two, are you? Yeah, I would be around that, yeah. With the quiff. Um so the club the, the, the big thing for us and why we do this is like the club and how it's where it's come from and how it's evolved. Like you said, twelve years ago we were both in the same dressing room. Training in the AOL, no gym, no structure. Saturday mornings you'd be training on, on any given surface, yeah. whether yeah. it was a field, a sacred heart, an astro up in another one down in Sally Noggin, we were up there somewhere as well. Like compared to now, oh, yeah. like the structures of the club, the academy underneath it, this is a proper football club now yeah. compared to when when you were here. Yeah. And is that something you've noticed, or did you come back in and think, well? No, it's it's. I so just before I signed, like the manager in, in Rollstone showed me around and just just to see the. You know what they've built there, and you know what's in place for for the younger generations and the first team. Yeah. You know, I was thinking. You know, I remember leaving, thinking this is a different world from when I was here last. Yeah. <coughs> and even, I know these maybe only small things, but if we're in Rollstone on a Saturday morning, or whatever, you know, the car park is full. We're coming off the pitch. The kids going up. Yeah. The parents, they're walking. They're seeing us coming off the pitch, and it just feels like everyone's involved together. You know, the young teams are. In the round, it was yeah. the first team, and it's a connection. Hundred percent, a connection. Yeah, and you know they're probably thinking, I want to be in that first team one day. Yeah, and they're watching us, and they're watching us train and stuff like that. So, um, just it, it's it's so it's so much better than when I was here, and um, I know there's a lot of emphasis on like stuff away from the pitch and how they're living their life as well. Yeah. You see signs all around the place about nutrition and yeah. gym work and even the gym facilities. Everything is just it's. It's so. It's just a, it's a like a headquarters now, isn't yeah. it? Like it's a proper it's a proper setup, and you know everything's there for kids to go and express themselves and for their talent to come out because anything they want and need is on site. Yeah. It's there and obviously, um, I probably wish I would have had that. <laughs> yeah. To, to, like, to be honest, I wish I had it when I f when we came back originally. That's yeah. the bit that, like, when you all the success you had at Dundalk. When you left the club, it's probably still similar to when you walked in the door, and yeah. and it's about how can we bring football clubs on that they become not and not just on dark. Well, don't get me wrong. You, like you're coming, you're coming back from that environment. Yeah. For me, I didn't know, I didn't know any different. Like, I thought yeah. that was that was the norm. So again, it's just you, you're coming back from that pressure, professional environment, and you're probably having that frustration. Yeah. I was put. That's the bit that frustrates you. Is I wasn't able to play the way I wasn't able to perform the way. I wanted to, so therefore I probably held back on trying to maybe fix things or call things out. And but that was the frustration, you know. Our gym instructor was 
was overweight, you know what I mean? Or, like, it was, it was madness. We had no food when we came off training. You had to be off the pitch at a certain yeah. time. Like, we were turning up on a Saturday morning, we didn't know where we were going to train. Yeah. So we were going, right, we're going to go up somewhere else. And you're like, come on, like. And, and I understood that there's a process, and I remember speaking to Jonathan probably more closely about it, is the process of building. And that's when he probably decided, well, you know what, we've had, we've had success, we've had group stages, but we've nothing to show for after. So then he decided, from now on, we're going to have something to show. So when you come in and you're successful at the club, when you leave, it's still in a good place. It's yeah. not. It doesn't just go with the good players that yeah. leave. I know you had that draw there, so I've no, I've, I've no issue with 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 like you said, the process. But looking back, you're thinking it's wrong. Like you know, the yeah. club should be better than you left it. Like you said, you're one of the most decorated players in the league. Does that mean something to you, or are you constantly looking at what's next? Um, I think probably it's obviously it's proud to be joined with the with the medals from your family. Like you know, but, yeah. But um. I think while I'm playing, it's probably something that I'm kind of not kind of focus on because I right. just want to keep trying to win, like keep yeah. trying to add as much as I possibly can. Um, obviously, I started out my career, I probably wouldn't have thought that I'd be able to achieve. Like so, yeah, I think it's something that I will appreciate more when you know when I do hang up the boots. So. Right. And what's your ambitions then for the next few years at Rovers? Oh, obviously, want to win, keep winning. Yeah. So I think this team can, you know, we can definitely go on to great things. Like I think. Yeah. That, close if we can if we can get if we can just go one more step in Europe I think we'll you know we'll showcase the players that we have. Yeah. Um, I think we, we wanna Europe is an aim of ours and obviously just to keep winning. I think yeah. when you come to this club, you know, your ambition has to be to just keep putting, you know, trophies in the cabinet. I think that's yeah. that's the, the expectation of, of playing here and um you see you see the stadium sold out every week like yeah. So people are coming to see us, you know, you know, play good football and Keep keep challenging for titles and keep challenging for things, and that's well no different, you know. And my ambition is still the same as when I won my first medal. Like I still yeah. want to just keep, you know, keep winning as much as I can because I know one day it'll, you know, it'll come to an end. So. But that's a good pressure, and you're able to handle yeah, yeah. that better now than probably you were, like you 100%. said. Yeah, and no. that's because you went through, like people say, oh, you go through a small bit of tough times, and it's it's fight or flight. Yeah. You decided I'm gonna fight. Yeah, know? no, I've learned, I've learned a lot. Probably from, I suppose maybe every every year in my career, I've probably been in a squad that's expecting to yeah. to win the league and there's the expectancy to go and win every week. So I think I've learned a lot from that. Yeah. Um, even though, you know, I probably didn't have the structure at the start of my career that you know other other people have had, but I think I have learned a lot yeah. on my feet. I've learned on my feet and I've adapted well, and you know I'm hopefully, you know, I've been able to kind of. Yeah, learn as I go. And yeah, that's a great way of looking at it. Yeah, you've learned on your feet. That's a great thing. Football, I don't, I don't normally do this because obviously at 30 years of age and we've gone through your ambitions at Rovers. What, what outside of football that you, that you're interested in or something that you might decide? Well, after football, I might go that route. Yeah, I think. I'm, I'm not, sure, I'm not sure about the coaching yeah. side of things. Um, a few of the lads think, have said that. I think Gary said it last week as well. Yeah, yeah, I think when I, when I do. You know, when I do hang up the boots, I think I'll just walk away. Maybe that's the way I feel. I just go do something different with my life. Big um, bag of medals. <laughs> yeah, but I try. I don't know. That might change. That might change over the coming years. I don't know. It's just how I feel right now. Obviously, I have kind of a big interest in kind of like technology and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah. So I could see myself. Well, it's not where I, I'd like to end up. You know, in the IT sector. Oh. Just where about in that? Where I know it's a broad kind of sector. So where in that? I just don't know yet. Got the, got the brain for it, have you? What? Got the brain for the IT sector. <laughs> yeah. Come here, no, that's great. Uh, listen, delighted to have you. Like I said to you, I felt young and old because I, I, like I shared the dressing room with you for a while. I always thought you were a good lad, and I, like I said, somebody that just needed a little help at certain times. But do you know what? There's no better probably lesson than helping yourself because now you know you can rely on yourself as well. And I think you've done that throughout your career. I'm so proud looking in just to even started a small bit of it with you you've been fantastic and it's great to see you back at Rovers after all these years because like I said you deserve to be in one of the top teams and the top clubs in the country it's been great thanks for coming up I really appreciate it all right thanks many guys all the best I'll show you now where it all did yeah look it's Palestine